Hey cats, it's your mids old man, Ed Budd here. I finally have my feet in a shoe that I've been mystified by since its release at the top of 2023. It's the Mizuno Wave Rebellion Pro. What a killer colorway too. It's quite the bonkers design in the heel, but is it all that apparent on foot? Let's investigate this unique shoe and see if it's still worth picking up. Thanks for tuning in people and supporting the channel. Hit that subscribe button, but also give this video a thumbs up like. Remember that you can become a member too, or give us a super thanks to help support the channel on a more ad hoc basis. Danke schön. The Wave Rebellion Pro is a shoe that's been sent over to me by Pro Direct Running, but they're not paying me to make this video, nor will they be vetting my views before my valued viewers. Mmm, garden center. Off the bat, in my UK size 11 or US 12, this one is 250 grams or 8.8 .8 ounces on the money. That is very light for a running shoe, certainly in my size, and it puts it in with its other super shoe cousins too. Now, a bit hard to measure the midsole stack on this one because you can see you've got this really extreme bevel here at the back. I think Mizuno have done this as a way to circumvent those 40 millimeter rules. Though, if I measure it as per the other super shoes I've measured, I'm getting about 44 millimeters of stack in my size that's absolutely fine it's pretty much in line with what i've got in other super shoes though we do have about 38 millimeters here in the forefoot so i'm getting kind of like a six mil drop but i feel the drops a little bit more aggressive than that when you get it on foot if i'm correct we have mizuno energy light plus on the top level and then mizuno energy light on the bottom the foams measure between about 24 shore a and 28 shore a so they're certainly on the softer side and they do certainly certainly feel like PIBA based foams. I can't really find any info on that, but that's what they feel like to me underfoot anyway. I've got about 11.7 centimeters of width here at the widest point in the forefoot and then about 8.3 centimeters of width in the heel so it is a little bit on the narrower side in the heel pretty much what you'd expect up front i found the shoe true to size it's a touch more on the minimal side on that race side but that's kind of what you're getting here isn't it that's what you want if you're buying this shoe i don't think there's any real reason to go a half size down or a half size up in this instance right let's get into the main part of the review we'll start with the upper foot First. Lockdown wise in the upper, it's a majestic model. Very little bunching at all. It's only the most minimal amount of materials. Mizuno have not been overly generous here. Thank you, Mizuno. You do have to shift the tongue around a little bit. It's not gusseted in anywhere. It does feature a double lace loop on the tongue to hold it in place and it works a treat. Once you tighten up though, and then utilize the runner's knot. Lace length is absolutely spot on for that, by the way. You have one of the best lockdowns I've achieved in a shoe. It's just so easy to get the tension right. You could blindfold yourself and wear some very thick gauntlets and you could still manage to do it. I've not really had any lace pressure on my initial runs. This is a no messing shoe the most minimal materials, but it just works a treat. Gives me little hints, I suppose, of the ASICS Metaspeed Sky Plus. Now there is some type of very thick, very narrow heel counter here. It certainly doesn't move too far around the heel. It's very much at the back. I guess a little bit like what we saw in the Adios Pro 3 from Adidas. There's minimal padding here, but what's there provides the lockdown you need. Toe box is breathable enough here. I've not pumped it full of smoke or put any lights through it or anything like that. But I'll tell you this, people. If you run around Penmill Trading Estate in zero degree C temps, there was more than enough air getting in and out there. I bet at 10 degrees C or 20 even, it's probably going to be absolutely fine in terms of breathability, certainly in comparison to other super shoes. There's a whole bunch of holes here across the front and sides to allow the foot some air, and I'm finding the width of the toe box here to be pretty much spot on. Enough room to make it comfortable for training and racing too. There's a couple of fabric reinforcements internally within the upper they're on their medial and lateral sides just to provide a bit of structure there and help the lockdown further i have to say i've enjoyed this shoe straight out the box from an upper perspective i think it looks stunning as well the shoes are mismatched in terms of the colorway but i think they complement each other really well 
though my favorite is the predominantly blue one here. There's few shoes that I've reviewed this year that are perfect in the upper, but this is one of them. I can't think of a single thing that I would change here on the upper of the Mizuno Wave Rebellion Pro. So I'm giving it a three out of three after my initial runs. Midsole, midsole, midsole now. Midsole wise, I've got to be honest, I'm a really big fan of this shoe. Any speed, any pace, any session so far. Just doesn't feel odd at all in terms of that bevel at the back. I mean, if you're a really aggressive heel striker, literally coming down like this on your foot, but nobody does that. Nobody is running with their heel like that aggressively hitting the ground. And it's been proven that some of those top marathon runners are like very, very specific midfoot strikers. Anyway, I think they've done this for a very different reason. It's to help their foam compress and it's not really all that different from those rocker like shoes is it if you very aggressively hit the ground with your heel i could see you having some issues perhaps i can see this hitting the spot for 10k through to the half marathon for me it's probably a little bit too much shoe for a 5k but I can't see why I couldn't run a full marathon in this one from Mizuno. The midsole, despite the quite significant cutouts, feels stable enough to me, even on bends. I guess if you do overpronate, you could have some issues with this type of design, mainly due to the huge cutouts here and the quite narrow areas on the sides. What I find is that this design is really quick to get you up onto that mid to forefoot area and toe off. So it increases the cadence a little bit. It just feels really exciting and enjoyable to run in, just like the Primex Strung did. The trampoline-like heel area there, it kind of absorbs the impact and sort of transfers you forward very quickly. All about getting onto that front foot. I find this shoe likes it when you really lift those knees up and open up the throttle. It's just almost effortless, really, hitting those half marathon marks without too much trouble at all. I guess the massive midsole stack here isn't going to be for everybody. If you need a more stable shoe, then look elsewhere. I mean, it's very tall. If you do walk around in the shoe, it's going to feel weird, almost like you're on water, I suppose. But Mizuno rightly stress on the little tag that they've put onto the shoe when you get it out of the box that it's for running and for that purpose only. So, you know, if you're going to wear it to go down the pub or something, knock yourself out. We might do. So not since the Primex Strung have I put on a running shoe and sort of been beaming from ear to ear. Wave Rebellion Pro is just such a fun shoe to run in. It's engaging. It makes the experience of running very enjoyable. Now, I think the last shoe that gave me that type of feeling straight away was the Primax Strung. But this is a good 50 grams lighter per shoe. And it really is quite noticeable on foot, just how light it is. I think with a shoe like the Wave Rebellion Pro with the slightly more fragile midsole materials here, the whole hollowed out design is always gonna be the nemesis to this type of foam. So I'm just trying to enjoy the shoe while it lasts. But that's to be expected from any shoe really of this type at that price point. I am seeing a little bit of medial wear here in the heel. I have seen that other shoe tubers have had similar issues as well and they've documented that. It's going to be exposed to wear so it's just something to bear in mind but that happens on loads of them. So I think if you're anything but like a neutral gait kind of runner there's specific issues there. I would try and test the shoe out with caution first but for me it's absolutely fantastic. Leaves the legs feeling really fresh and really nimble. Easily up there with the Primex Strung and also the Super Blast in terms of Pure fun and enjoyment. Can't wait for the V2, which people have been discussing quite a bit this week. A 2.9 out of three, lowered only by some very quick wear on the medial side of the heel. The rest of it looks brand new. Next to no visibility out here today. Like literally almost nothing. Outsole now. Is it going to be the fly in the ointment? Not this time. This incredible grip from the tiny, very firm lugs that we've got here on the bottom of the Mizuno Wave Rebellion Pro. They're really hard and they do elevate the traction here to the highest level. On road and pavement, darn good. Even tried it on this huge patch of wet leaves. No problem at all, no slipping, no sliding. There's just lots of opportunity for good traction here on the shoe. And there's no major concern in terms of the spacing between the lugs as well. The only one area might get something stuck, I guess, is here in the heel. 
like a big stone or something. Everything else just sort of impacts off the surface. It really is quite aggressive. I mean, no questions there on a very icy day at zero degrees, a short underfoot, and it's a simple matter here in the outsole of a three out of three. It's just an absolute banger. Now, value-wise, I think these were around about 200 pounds at retail. In theory, this was about 160 pounds discounted in the Black Friday sales. This is a shoe that I can recommend that you test out. Don't be put off by the stack and the odd design because it really isn't that odd. Do you remember when like the Vaporfly Next Percent was like leaked and people were like, what is that? People can't run in that. And then it became like the norm. As a running tool, this is like absolutely immense. I can see me getting a lot of use out of this on a daily basis and do some racing in it too. And there's loads of discounted pairs right now, even below that 160 that this was up at, if you get the right size and you could get an amazing bargain. In terms of quality out the box, it's really, really good. It's a bit of a masterclass really. There's no bad glue marks or pieces haven't been stitched properly it just feels like a really nice quality item i love reviewing running shoes i just love running really in general and this is one of those shoes that sort of stokes the fire again you know i mean i'm challenged to try and score it down here in terms of value when some daily shoes are above what this cost you know, there's very few shoes that shine at pace in very challenging conditions and this is one of them i'm going to give it a 2.9 out of 3 for value here maybe it won't last forever but no shoe does does it i think if you get 250 300 miles out of this before it capitulates well good stuff because i think you'll be smiling on every one of those miles i mean the alpha fly 3 is going to be 285 quid isn't it so is it really worth that bonkers price well of course it isn't will the arch still be really prominent in that shoe where everybody's saying it's not i'm very interested to find out in the meantime though i'm going to be enjoying this one because it's a banger if i've totaled the scores up correctly for the mizuno wave rebellion pro after my initial runs we got 11.8 out of 12. I think closest thing to the perfect shoe that I've found so far. Why didn't I test it out earlier? What do you make of this crazy shoe, people? Let me know down in the comments. <coughs> Musical interlude for you. Way back when I was like a little lad, I remember going along to watch Yeovil Town Football Club with my dad. Although it wasn't quite that simple, I'd sit atop the dugout and I was in charge of controlling the sound levels between a crowd microphone and a radio microphone that was being used by the club chairman. He would do like a commentary on the match and then my dad would film the games to give to the manager so the team could improve, you know, they could look back on what had occurred during the game. After that, I kind of got hooked on football, really. I do like, you know, the upper leagues, but it's always been a soft spot there for the non-league football. Going along to the famous sloped pitch, and watching Yeovil was fun. And then we moved to a big ground and it took us a long time there to really get momentum going to get into the league itself. There's been ups and downs over the years. We had a fantastic period, what, 20 or so years ago and then 10 years ago, the start of a real fall from grace with Yeovil now back in the National League South. Although we are top of the table right now and today on the making of this video, we take on Wrexham in the FA Cup. Now, you all know about Wrexham. I'm not going to talk too much about them. Owned by some big, big players with lots of money. Although, in my honest opinion, they're kind of doing things right, really, rather than just throwing crazy cash, you know, to try and get Wrexham up through the leagues. They're doing it in the right way and helping out the community too. So we play them today. So, Ed, musical interlude, where's this all going? Go and check out the Yeovil song, Yeovil True. Absolutely fantastic. A bit of a satire, I suppose, on the Somerset accent. You know, everybody knows that one. Who are, who are, Combine Harvesters and all that. But it's a great tune and, you know, it really does inspire when you listen to that track. It documents, you know, the cycle of Yeovil fans. There's a new person born. 
they get sort of indoctrinated into following the club get married or whatever and then another new person appears i got a feeling that my young lad's gonna probably be into football at some point i mean he is able to also differentiate between you know running shoes and air jordans which is kind of cool and he also seems to want a guitar for christmas now so you can see where this is all going go and check it out people it's on some of the streaming services and uh, i think you'll chuckle away at listening to Yeovil True. Maybe I can listen to it after we beat Wrexham later on in the FA Cup. Thanks for tuning in, people. It's always appreciated. Hit that subscribe button, but also give this video a thumbs up like. My name's Ed Budd, and I'll be seeing you. Ah, oh, it feels so good to get back out running again. Whole week where I've just had a really bad head cold. So I went quickly from my chest to my head and I was just bunged up. It just feels so good. Ah, oh, I can breathe again. And, uh, you know, fitness hasn't gone anywhere. It doesn't, you know, you think, oh, if I miss a day of training, you know, everything's gonna go downhill. It's gonna be a spiral. It's a load of rubbish really, isn't it? So fitness, feel really good today. So I've been wearing the Mizuno Wave Rebellion Pro. I have to say, this is one of my favorite shoes of the year. Absolutely enjoying it. Everything about it, the grip is immense. You feel like you're kind of tearing into the surface of the floor, which is great. Really easy to speed up as well because of that. Toe off is really nice as you push off and it just handles the range of paces really well. Like the upper fit, it's a little bit chilly today, so I'm not gonna uh, score it down too much for that. It is very thin, certainly around that toe box area. But yeah, definitely one of my favorites of the year. Be sure to let me know your thoughts and experiences in the Wave Rebellion Pro down in the comments.